Hi friend, I am Margo Starbuck. When a publisher or an agent is reading your book proposal, they are wondering who you are. And today, having an author website that lets them know who you are and what you do is essential. It's like, it's your business card. And I don't mean like an extra tab on your jewelry making website. I mean, you need to have a website, even a simple one that identifies you as a communicator. And I'll also say that in some ways it legitimizes you as a communicator. Uh, I hear what's a little crazy about that since any old joker can throw up a website, but when a visitor lands at your site, I want them to be quickly and easily able to identify five things. Who you are, what you're about, what you've done, how you're reaching audiences, and what audiences are saying. Donald Miller's team uses what they call a grunt test. From your homepage, could a caveman understand what you offer, right? It is, it's gotta be that simple. And I see far too many writers' websites that do not pass that grunt test. I can see that you do freelance editing, but I don't know what you're saying as a communicator. I need you to tell me. Or I can see that you blog, but I don't have time to read five posts and pick out the common themes. I need you to tell me what you blog about. Or I can see that you're really passionate about nutrition, but I have no idea if or how you are reaching audiences. I need you to tell me. I'm a caveman and I need to know at a glance who you are and what you're about. Or I'm an agent or a publisher and I need to know at a glance who you are and what you're about. Your author website is doing what it's supposed to do if it makes it easier for a publisher to say yes. They are learning at a glance who you are, what you do, and how well you do it. So if you do not yet have an author website, I want you to create a simple one. And here's what it should communicate. An effective author website communicates who you are. Offer a brief bio highlighting your relevant education or experience. And brief is important. Even if you are very accomplished, Visitors will not read two pages of text. Keep it brief. You must have a picture. And in my experience looking at author websites, it's sort of like online dating. If you don't have a picture, you don't really exist. <laughs> so a good, clear picture helps a visitor connect with you and remember you. An effective author website communicates what you're about. When a visitor lands at your site, they shouldn't have to work to figure out what you write about or speak about, what your brand is. They need to know immediately what it is you're selling. I will pause in a moment to hammer this home. An effective author website communicates what you've done. Make it easy for a visitor to read your writing, to hear your message, so link to any books, articles, podcasts, videos of you speaking, demonstrating what you've already done, already communicated, instills confidence. Those links give a visitor the opportunity to experience you as a communicator. An effective author website communicates how you're reaching audiences. Show a visitor the ways you're reaching audiences right now. Link to your social media pages. Feature your own blog or podcast. Link to other platforms where your message is being shared. If you speak, list the topics on which you speak and previous gigs. An effective author website communicates what audiences are saying include endorsements from people who dig your writing or speaking. And if this feels out of reach for you, it might not be as tricky as you think. I want you to pay attention to what you're already hearing. At first, it might be someone who 
adds a comment when you post a blog. Thank you so much for writing. I never realized this. And then it might be someone who emails you through the contact page on your simple website to say, this article really helped me with this problem I'm facing at work this week. And then it might be an editor for whom you write a short article who emails back to say, you did a great job on this piece. What you said about that thing is going to be a gift to our readers. When you receive those compliments, ask the writer's permission to share those on your site. I want you to start paying attention and capturing those kinds of endorsements. So those are the big five, but there's one more bonus feature that you can't not have on your website. It is essential and that is contact information. Now, there's two ways that this can go bad. I call this a Goldilocks fail because one of the ways it goes bad is too little and the other way it goes bad is too much. I have visited authors' websites where there was no way to contact the writer. That is a fail. Make it plain. And also, I have heard from a publisher who wanted to hire a writer to do a writing job and the writer's contact forms mandatory fields were so cumbersome that the publisher checked out. They found someone else to do the job. They weren't going to monkey around with it. Make contacting you clear and easy. So friend, here are your marching orders. If you do not yet have an author website that does those five essential things, I'm going to tell you what your next step should be. If you don't have a website, grab a domain name and set up a simple site. If you are not tech savvy, you know a teenager or a college student, and list them. If you have a site but can't show your work, can't send a visitor to something you've written, begin pitching articles related to your book. If you have a site and can point visitors to what you've written, begin to gather endorsements of your writing and or your speaking. I understand that if you're hustling to create the site and pitch the articles and get the endorsements, it can feel a little bit like a chicken and egg situation, right? Which one comes first? Don't let that keep you stuck. Just start. And a note on the website itself, the most effective author websites are simple, clear and concise. When a visitor lands on your homepage, do they know immediately who you are and what you're about, right? Does it pass that grunt test? And specifically, what can they see on your website without doing any scrolling? Just like newspapers feature their best content above the fold on the front page of the newspaper to grab readers' attention, you have to do the same thing assume that visitors will not scroll down to the bottom of your homepage. Communicating effectively in that above the fold space without any scrolling is critical. Resist the temptation to clutter your site with too many graphics, too much content. You serve the visitor and you serve yourself by creating a site that is simple, clear, and concise. Before we wrap, I have got to return to branding. Some writers resist branding themselves with a custom logo, color scheme, or clever tagline because it feels too commercial. I get that. This isn't about packaging yourself. It's actually about communicating effectively. You actually serve visitors, serve audiences, if you can communicate clearly and concisely what you're about. When I visit your website, don't make me figure it out. Tell me what you write about. Is it motherhood or race or disordered eating or suffering? I need you to tell me. And that's why I want you to use a tagline, which is sort of like a slogan clarifying your brand so that I know immediately who you are and what you're about. Here are a few examples. Priscilla Shirer, T 
teaching the uncompromised truth of God's word so that others might know him and experience his power. You know what she's about. Bianca Olthoff, inspiring today's generation to discover meaning and purpose in Jesus. You know what she's about. Francis Chan, to help people see, hear, understand, and respond to God's amazing love for us. For what it's worth, I think that short is the win. If a visitor can read your tagline one time and remember it, that's a great tagline. So something simple like, buy less, live more, or race and grace can quickly orient a visitor to who you are and what you're about. I really want you to spend some time on this because it matters. If you are struggling to identify your brand, believe me, I feel you. And here's why. I write my own random books on everything from shame to neighbor love to body image to youth sports to dating, right? That is not brandable. <laughs> I also write books as a collaborator for people who have incredible stories. That's hard to brand. And also, I am really passionate about supporting writers seeking publication. So don't come at me with, it's hard to brand, you know, who I am and what I do. I'm just so interesting. So here's where I landed. When I was building an audience to care about Margot Starbuck books, I had to work to find it, right? To find that, that thread throughout. And my tagline of my newsletter was, be loved, be love. And today, Word Melon, supporting writers who are seeking publication, is equipping writers. Spend some time, get creative, about crafting that tagline that helps a caveman understand what you do. <laughs> and make sure your site is working. Your author website is working if it's super plain to a visitor who you are, what you do, and how well you do it. A strong, clear author website makes it easier for a publisher to say yes. You got this.